So you know how they always say hindsight is 2020. You got to live and learn, right? But the funny thing that I'm noticing is the older my children get, the more boundaried I need to become, which is incredibly counterintuitive because what I've realized is when you, that when your kids are younger, when they're toddlers, you know, you get all of this parenting advice or the books and they tell you, um, you know, to have boundaries around sleep and to really figure out all of that stuff. And you're just overwhelmed and you're trying to manage, um, you're trying to manage like your emotional stuff. You're being chronically triggered. But as my kids have gotten older, what I've realized is that the, at the key, like the keystone to every single thing that I learn, that I teach, that I'm doing in every relationship is boundaries. Um, we have our physical boundaries. We have our emotional boundaries. We have our spiritual boundaries. We have our mental, like all these boundaries, financial boundaries, everything is a boundary. And in order to live a healthy life, like a sustainable, healthy life, it is required for you to have boundaries. Something as simple as like being boundaried with um, how much you're getting done in a day, because if you are, if you do too much, you will burn out, like your physical body will burn out. And it's the same with the emotional boundaries. If you're overdoing it for other people, like you are going to burn out. You're going to become angry and resentful. You're creating raging codependency. And so people don't like boundaries, but they are required. And the cultural lie that we tell ourselves is when our children get to a certain age, um, it gets easier. And I was waiting for that moment. Like I was actually waiting for that moment. I felt like I was... Um, it, it was a cultural bait and switch. And maybe it's a generational thing. I'm not sure. But I was waiting for that moment in my mind, like this is going to get easier when, this is going to get easier when. And what I realized is it doesn't get easier. It gets more emotionally uncomfortable if you don't have boundaries. And the healthier that I have become in all areas of my life, my mental health, emotional well-being, my physical health, my spiritual health, my financial health, you know, fulfillment, relationships and alignment. In order to do that, I have had to have boundaries. I've had to really strengthen and like do the reps for the boundary muscle. And when I'm looking at my relationships with my children, my growing children who are now 12, 14 and 19, I'm realizing that my happiness, my fulfillment in the quality of those relationships with my children all has to do with boundaries. My boundaries with myself, the boundaries that I need to hold with them, that the older they get, the, the wiser they get, the easier it is to, or the easier they think it is to manipulate me. And the boundaries I need to have with my mind, with my mental load, the stories that I tell myself about what a good mother is, uh, what other people perceive to be good mothering, especially if my children are living an unconventional life. Every single day I'm using boundaries. It could be a little mental boundary when I'm wanting to re be incredibly reactive when I go from a green zone to a red zone and my kid is doing something and all of a sudden I want to react. I have a boundary with my emotion and I'm saying to myself, Heather, like there's absolutely no reason why you need to react here. What is going on? Why, like, what is he triggering inside of you? That is a mental and an emotional boundary. And because I have that boundary, I'm less reactive in my communication. And when I'm less reactive in my communication, it creates a deeper connection with my child because I'm not explosive all the time. Now, I also have a boundary with myself mentally and asking myself, where do I feel off? Where am I not taking care of myself? Where am I neglecting my own needs, um, which is a boundary? So sometimes I have to say, I don't have the capacity for that right now. And I'm practicing what I preach, which is energetic time management. And I'm putting those things on the calendar first. And then when I go to the calendar, 
and I am about to do something, I have boundaries with my time or boundaries with my emotion. And sometimes, sometimes they win, right? Sometimes that thing is on the calendar, the day gets away from you, but I watch and observe what got away from me. Was it me that got away from me? Or was it like somebody else taking over my calendar? Was it me and my time? Like what was actually taking away from me? Where did I slip up on my boundary? Standards. Standards for feeling respected. Standards for feeling valuable. Standards for feeling appreciated. All boundaries. Write this down. We teach people how to treat us. It could be a child, it could be a toddler, it could be a grown ass adult. We teach people how to treat us. And what I mean by that is it requires a boundary in order for you to say, oh yeah, like I don't allow people to talk to me like that. Or, oh yeah, I'm happy to have a conversation with you if we can figure out how to do it, like, you know, without raised voices. Um, Oh yeah, no, my rates are, you know, more than that. But if you are looking for somebody who's cheaper, I can give you a referral or for, you know, if that is your budget, we can do this. And here's some resources that you can have. My point is standards, raising our standards for how we want to feel, how we want to be treated, the life that we want to live. These are all boundary focused. And the cultural belief and lie that we've been told is that the older our children get, the easier it gets. And what I actually see is it doesn't get any easier if you are somebody who is always trying to become a better version of yourself. Because when you're trying to become a better version of yourself, you're taking more emotional responsibility for how you want to feel, how you want to communicate, how you want other people to feel. And when you do that, it requires boundaries. So my challenge for you today, my question for you today is what is your relationship to boundaries? If you have like a negative association to it, if it feels so gross to you, if you're like, oh my God, I I don't want to implement boundaries. It makes me so emotionally uncomfortable. Think about boundaries as a beautiful, like keystone to healthy relationships. And when you kind of flex those muscles a little bit, um, you're teaching other people that it is okay for them to have boundaries as well. So number one, if you are challenged, if you're like, this is harder than I thought it was going to be, that's okay. I just want you to know you're not alone. It's a cultural lie that we've been taught Number two is there are many, 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 many different types of boundaries. It's not just time boundaries. It's also energy boundaries. It's also like boundaries with the stories that we tell ourselves. If you're chronically saying the same thing over and over again, just saying, oh, I'm done telling myself that. No, honestly, I love having boundaries with my emotions too, because sometimes my emotion, like guilt as an example, will want to run the show. I need to have boundaries with it. Okay, you can feel guilty for five more minutes and then it's it's time. I'm shutting it, I'm shutting it down. Um, and then we're moving on. And so when you learn the skill of boundaries, you are um, you're just doing your kids a huge service. They're understanding that you have standards, that you have value and you feel appreciated. So everyone is always reflecting back to us. And if you have no idea where to start when I'm talking about boundaries, head on over to my website, heatherchauvin.com. I have so many resources on my website where you can get started. We even have a quiz um, that you can kind of like where to focus first. Um, You can email us, hello at heatherchauvin.com if you're interested in additional support. Um, But the magic always happens in the action.